Norman Woodfield produced a lot of the stuff for Motown, Temptations, mm-hmm. and Marvin Gaye, and also some of the stuff with the Four Tops. And this was later in their career. This was in the 2000s, early 2000s. Norman Woodfield had made a record for the Four Tops with Levi Stubbs. Levi Stubbs, when I was repping the Four Tops, Levi Stubbs was still alive, but he was very sick. He couldn't even sing with them anymore. He couldn't play with them anymore. But he did sing on that album. So we had a finished record by the Four Tops. And I was like, well, I can get a deal for that. It's the Four Tops. <laughs> Norman Whitfield is, kind of, was again, one of those guys that had kind of burned a lot of bridges in the business. A lot of people didn't like him. The record kind of sounded dated. It really wasn't a great record. The Four Tops hadn't put an original record out in years. So, again, I went out to my contacts and... I got a few people, including uh, Beyonce's dad at the time, had a label called Music World. He offered a deal because he loved that kind of stuff. But, you know, Norman Whitfield was looking for a bigger deal. He wanted, like, a big check, you know, because remember, he come, these, a lot of these people come from the eras where you sign a deal and you get a huge check. It's not like that anymore. The labels don't, they don't give you big checks anymore. It's all back end. So he wouldn't take the deal. He controlled the whole project because he paid okay. for the record. So he kept passing on the deal. So, again, I read the band. I was the representative agent and took them all over, but ultimately um, they didn't end up signing any of the deals I brought to them. And then Levi Stubbs died after that, and I don't know if any original members are still in the group, and that record never came out as far as I know. And Norman Whitfield died. Norman Whitfield died after that. You know, it's like everybody died. I mean, people are old, you know. Yeah. It's just weird. But the guy that brought all that to me is still a client of mine and a friend, and he worked for Norman Whitfield. Norman didn't have a lawyer at the time, and neither did the band, so... I just kind of fell into that, and it was an honor to work for those people because they're famous, and I I love their music, but unfortunately, they didn't really end up taking any of the situations I brought to them. I really like Rose Royce and Car Wash and a lot of that. Stuff. I mean, he was really, really good, and of course, and he co-wrote I Heard It Through the Grapevine. Right. Amazing guy. And I met him several times, but again, when I met him, he was, it was later in life. I mean, he, you know, he died a few years after that. He was you know, kind of a kooky character, interesting real kind of cranky kind of guy and didn't really want to talk too much about, you know, because I love all that stuff, but I don't want to be some geeky fan guy because I'm really supposed to just be doing legal work. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I, you know, they don't really want me to pick their brain about their whole history of Motown. (laughs) You know, so I didn't really, you know, he's just like, let's go make a deal, make some money, you know, so kind of like that. I I didn't really get to know him that well, but, you know, you could tell he was one of those, he was one of those guys that, made a lot of money and he was a maverick type of a guy and he didn't take any shit from anybody and didn't want to hear anybody's opinion and <laughs> most people in the business didn't really want to deal with him because he was kind of difficult. Hi, this is Marcus Singletary. Please subscribe to my channel.